So now we're going to look at another type here. So we've graphed our functions. We've graphed rational functions. Let's look at solving rational equations. Now, an e rational equation is just an equation with fractions. And remember, that's all a rational is. It's just working with fractions. Now, to solve a rational and to solve an equation with fractions, what we have to do is first get rid of the fractions. You know, some people really like working with fractions. I don't like working with fractions. So when we have an equation, we can get rid of the fractions. And this is a question that you probably did in grade 9. So it's going to be very, very similar. So let's take this equation. And we want to get rid of the fractions. And if you remember, to get rid of the fractions, we need to multiply by the lowest common denominator. The so lowest common denominator. And in this case, the lowest common denominator would just be 12. They all happen to have just numbers in the denominator. So we multiply everything by 12. And we have to be very careful that we do the same to one side as we do to the other. So I'm going to do this in a couple steps. So if I multiply 1 third by 12, I'm going to get 12 over 3. And that's going to equal 12x over 6 plus 24x over 12. So all I've done is multiplied everything by 12. Haven't tried to solve anything yet. Now, at this point, now I can get rid of the fractions. Because if I multiply by the lowest common denominator, I should have no fractions left. So 12 over 3 is just going to become 4. 12x over 6 is going to become 2x. 24x over 12 is just also going to become 2x. And we get 4 is equal to 4x. And we have ourselves a little baby equation now. What does x equal? Of course, x is going to equal 1. So that's how we solve our rational equation x is going to equal 1. Now, what we want to do is make sure that we when we go back and we put it in our original equation that it works. So if we have 1 third is equal to 1 6 plus 2 twelfths, well, 2 twelfths and 1 6 are just 1 6 plus 1 6, which is 2 over 6, which is 1 third. And does 1 third equal 1 third? I hope so. Let's put it a little more. There we go. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. Of course it does. Now, that is a very simple one. But we're going to use those principles. It's going to be building on, building on uh, what we've done already. So we take a question like that. And we're going to use these steps. And I just did these steps already. So you factor the, low, factor the denominator to find the lowest common denominator. We're going to multiply every term in the equation by the lowest common denominator to eliminate all the fractions, solve the simplified equation, and then check the solution to make sure it solves each of the equations. This will determine what are called extraneous roots. And extraneous roots are just the key word to extraneous is extra. Roots that are extra in the equation. So we're going to come back to these steps when we solve this equation. So this one looks a little scarier, because now we have fractions still. We have rationals. We have uh, rational functions in particular, because we have x's in the denominator and x's in the numerator. Um, but uh, what we have to do is we have to try and get rid of those fractions. But we do it the same way, by finding the lowest common denominator. So what we have to do first is we need to uh, factor each of the denominators. So the first one, we can easily factor this. 18 stays the same. And then the denominator just becomes, this is just a difference of squares. x minus 3, x plus 3. That's just taking the original fractions, the original rationals, and uh, we're just taking the original functions and just leaving them the same. So all we've done is we've factored the first denominator. 
Now, we can now determine what the lowest common denominator is. The lowest common denominator is just every factor of every denominator. Let me say that again. The lowest common denominator is every factor of every denominator. So we need to take every factor of every denominator and make that our lowest common denominator. The lowest common denominator then is if we take the factors of the first denominator, we need x minus 3. We need x plus 3. Oh, let's make that a plus. x plus 3. That is the factors of the denominator in the original, or the original side, or the first fraction there. Now, if we look for the factors in the denominator of this expression, we already have that factor. So we don't have to put it in again. It's already there. If we need to find the factors of this denominator, again, it's already in there. So our lowest common denominator is just x minus 3, x plus 3. So we've determined what the lowest common denominator is. Now let's go back to our steps. Next thing we're going to do is multiply every term in the equation by the lowest common denominator to eliminate all of the fractions. So what we do is we now take our fractions and we have x minus 3, x plus 3, multiply everything by that, and we're going to get 18, x minus 3, x plus 3, that's just multiplying it in, over x minus 3, x plus 3. Okay, so now let's multiply the other side. 2x, x minus 3, x plus 3, all over x plus 3, and this other one we're going to have x times x minus 3, x plus 3, all over x minus 3. Now, all I've done is I've just multiplied it in. Now, anything that's common in the top and the bottom is going to cancel out, and we're going to get 18 is equal to 2, x minus 3, I forgot my x, 2x, x minus 3, plus x times x plus 3. At this point, what I can do is we can now expand this in. We're going to get squared, minus 6x, plus x squared, plus 3x is equal to 18, and if I bring all of the things to the same side and combine all the like terms, I'm going to get 0 is equal to 3x squared minus 3x minus 18. So now, to solve this quadratic, now this goes back to solving quadratic equations. This one's actually, what we can do here is we can divide everything by 3. x squared minus x minus 6, and this, thankfully, just turned out to be one that we can factor. So we can factor this down into x and x, and we can go minus 3 plus 2 is equal to 0. So when we find our solutions, we're going to find that x is equal to 3 and x is equal to 2, minus 2. Now, that solves our equation. So that solves our rational equation. But remember, we've got to go back to the last step here, is we solve the simplified equation. So if we've solved the simplified equation, now we need to check to see that the solution makes the solution, or sorry, it solves the original equation. So let's go back to our original equation here. And our original equation was uh, 18 over x squared minus 9 equals 2x over x plus 3, x over x minus 3. And we're going to check to see that this solution that we now have determined solves that equation. So if we put, and let's just write that down again. I'm going to have to write this down again. We're going to have 18 over, and I'm actually going to put it in factored form, x minus 3, x plus 3 is equal to 2x over x plus 3. 
and plus x over x minus 3. Now, if we put our solutions in here, well, right away, we know that x, if we look at the restrictions on our original equation, x cannot equal minus 3, and x cannot equal 3. If we get solutions of x equals minus 3, x equals 3, that's going to make the denominators equal to 0. And those are not allowed. So if we look at the solutions that we have, one of the solutions that we determined was x equals 3. So our math has told us that x equals 3 is a possible solution. But we can't put it as a possible solution because that would make the denominators equal to 0. So what we have to do is we have to say x equals 3, OK, but so long we have to throw that away. The only solution then to this quadrat or this rational equation is x equals negative 2. x equals 3 is what's called an extraneous root. Meaning extra, don't use, don't want.